Hello, friends. I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. You know, a number of years ago, I saw a movie called Heaven is Real. And then I've interviewed uh, Don Piper, who wrote the book 90 Minutes in Heaven. He died in a car accident, was gone for 90 minutes, and he said he spent those 90 minutes in heaven. Well, today we have a very special guest by the name of Joy Wiggins that also died. We're talking about her heart stopped for uh, almost 15 minutes, and she also saw heaven. Stick around. You don't want to miss today's conversation on In Your Corner. Joy, I want to thank you for joining me on In Your Corner today. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, yours is a very interesting story, and I suppose before we get started, I need to tell the audience that, you know, 30 days ago, a month ago, today, this lady became my sister-in-law. I married her baby sister. Uh, her sister lost her husband last year, and I lost my wife, and so we... Uh, dated for a number of months and just got married a month ago today. So I would say, welcome, sister-in-law. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much. I appreciate so it. take me back and tell me what happened on that fateful day in 2003 that caused you to die. Well, it was October the 11th, 2003. Now, the day before had been our, my husband and my anniversary, which was October the 10th. And we were building a, a room onto the house uh, so that we would have an extra bedroom. Uh, and he was in a place that he could not uh, climb any longer. He had back problems. So uh, I was putting the rafters on the room that we were building onto the house. And he had put me a walk board on the left-hand side, and I had a nail gun that I was using to put all the rafters. And I completely got all the rafters on the left-hand side, completely done. And then we were going to measure the right-hand side of the rafters and then go to a little restaurant and have a meal to, in a celebration of our anniversary. So he said, okay, uh, let's check and see if the rafter will fit. So um, we did, and it didn't fit. There was just a little space that it needed to have. So he said, well, let's put a spacer board. And for us to be able to do that, he handed me the board, and I was kind of scared to walk on the rafters without a walk board. So I stayed on the left-hand side where I had a walk board and reached underneath the ridge board and held the, uh, the spacer board there. And then I shot, th but I was standing right in front of the uh, nail gun, mm -hmm. which was not really a smart thing to do. So you had a nail gun in your hand? I had a hand. nail gun in my hand. So I shot the board and it went in and and put the board in place like it was supposed to but in the process this was a pretty new nail gun that we had just gotten and it didn't have work on it yet to stop it from double shooting so it kicked back and it double shot well it went over the top of the ridge board and hit me right here and went into my heart oh my it was goodness. a two and a half or three and a half, three inch nail nail into your heart into my heart it went into the right ventricle of my heart, but it hurt so bad. It sent me to my knees. Oh man, it was so painful. And so I said to my husband, I've shot myself. Now I didn't tell him where, cause you know, I said, so I'm gonna go to the ladder and I'm gonna climb down. And uh, so he was out front and he ran around the house and come in the back door. And that's where the ladder was in the back area. And I got to the ladder and I got two rungs from the bottom and I died. I died right there. I quit breathing. I turned blue. I didn't have any breath. He reached down and prayed for me just for a second. Now, we had a daughter that lived just in the yard with us in another little house there. So he went out of the house, went down over to her house to get her. And uh, when I died, I was immediately in a heavenly place. In a heavenly place. What did you see? I was standing in a field, and there was this big, tall grass there, and the grass. So it was, at this time, you felt no pain. No pain. 
and and I guess you're going to tell me at some point in time you had an out of but well that was later so I'll let you go ahead and tell me what you saw right now. Immediately I was in a heavenly place and I saw grass, and it was just flowing like that. It was like it was alive, and there were flowers that were so beautiful, and the colors were so magnificent. And there was mountains in the background, and it was just so beautiful. Uh, then I was there for a little bit of time, and all of a sudden I got <gasps> like that and came back to my body. And uh, when I did, I, all I could say at that point was how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful. Now David, my husband, had come back into the house, and uh, so he saw me gulp and, and come my spirit entered back into my body. And uh, so he said, well, we need to take you to the hospital because he still did not know where I shot myself because it was right here. And it was just a tiny, tiny hole. There was no blood mm -hmm. because the blood was on the inside. The, what the doctor said was the pinhole that was in my heart was shooting blood out into the lining of my heart. And technically it created a blood clot that was called a tamponade. And so, I said, oh, just take me to my bed, lay me down. I don't see no blood. I'm going to be all right. So he took, he said, no, no, no. I got to take you to the hospital. Let's take you to the hospital. Well, thank the Lord he took you to the hospital. Well, he had talked me into it. Yeah. I even held on to the door frame and said, no, don't take me to the hospital. I want to go. So, <laughs> but he said, oh, please just go for me. So I said, okay, I'll go. So we got into the car. We lived 43 miles from the hospital in a backwoods area. Uh, and so we got into the car and my daughter that was living in the same uh, property as us brought her two children. They were both in, you know, very young. And one of them just had nothing but a diaper on because this was how fast we were getting out of that uh, to get me to the hospital. So they put me in the car and on the way to the hospital, we had to pass through like four little towns and he was blaring his horn and blinking his lights and, and uh, to get me there. I, we made it in 28 minutes, 43, 43 miles, miles in yeah. 28 minutes. <laughs> so, let me take a second. Joy Wiggins is with us and she shot herself in the heart and died and saw a vision of heaven, and so she's going to continue telling us her story. Made it to the hospital, 43 miles in 28 minutes. Yes. So he was flying low. He was flying low. <laughs> uh, so he said I told him how to get to the hospital because I worked at that hospital. And um, I don't remember that part. But uh, So you, you passed out immediately after shooting yourself, but then you remained conscious while he drove you to the hospital. Yeah, but my head wouldn't stay up. My head was doing this, mm -hmm. and my daughter was in the back seat holding it up. Yeah. And I continued to say how beautiful wherever I was and it what I saw. reminds me of that song, How Beautiful Heaven, Heaven Must, Must Be. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they get you to the hospital. And when we pulled up into the emergency room um, area, I remember the, the, um, the people bringing out a wheelchair to my side of the the uh, car, getting me out, and I turned around to sit down in the wheelchair, and then I flatlined. What that means is my heart quit beating completely. Um, Were you unconscious then? I had no knowledge, none whatsoever. I yeah. flatlined. I, again, that means that I had no heartbeat. And so they took me um, into the emergency Clinically room. dead, Clinically not biologically dead. Not biologically dead, dead. yeah. yeah. So they took me into the emergency room. Now the trauma physician just had to happen to be there. Now, I believe this is a God thing. God prepared all that needed to be prepared for me to have a miracle working in my life. There was a lot of things that happened. I had just met the trauma surgeon two days before that. So he knew who I was. And uh, so when he saw that it was me, then he didn't give up on me. That's the whole piece there that has to be uh, told is he didn't give up on me. And when he got me in there, he cut me right here from here to here and, and went, inside. went inside and saw that I had this blood clot on my heart. The blood clot has completely 
completely crushed the right ventricle of my heart. I had no right ventricle at that point in time. So there was no blood flow. There was no blood there flow. There was no way you could live unless no that was fixed. That's right. Yeah. So he cut that and took the tamponade off of the blood clot off of my heart, and my heart still didn't start beating. So he... Now you're out for 15 minutes. Yeah, and I was out, out probably more than that because you have to think about the time that I flatlined going into the hospital, the two minutes that it took for him to get to me in the emergency room, him cutting here and taking the tamponade off and realizing that's not going to start my heart. So he cracked my chest, and what that means is he just opened up my chest and used those spreaders and spread my chest, my chest bone apart to get to my heart. And he took my heart the bottom in this hand and the top in this hand. My and he did open heart massage. Now that's where the 15 minutes and 28 seconds come in. So he's actually putting blood through your body by basically making your heart making beat with heart his hands. Beat. Exactly. Incredible. Yes, it was incredible. Now this is where I saw myself over my body when I had an out of body experience. So there, you you flatline, your heart's quit beating, you're unconscious, but you have an out of the body experience. And what did you see there? So when I had the out of body experience, I saw myself above my, you know, my body, my spirit was above my body, and uh, I saw myself there, and I saw, um, I saw Jesus coming down, like, to me, and he had a host of angels with him. And around him, there was this semicircle of angels that were just around him. And they were up in the air, and I was up in the air, and I was telling him, you know, he said I had to go back. And I said, no, I don't want to go back. Don't, don't make me go Why back. Why did you not want to come back? To be truthful with you, I had a hard life. You had a hard life. I had a hard life. And what you saw there was? Was so much better than the life that I was living on earth. So if I could say anything to anybody, God has you. If, he, if you have him in your life, God has you. In now, Joy, let me ask you a question. You're saying that God has you. You know, we've often as Christians heard that the first thing that happens when you die is that your spirit leaves the body. And you can testify to that because you were, your body was laying in a hospital bed mm -hmm. and a doctor was working on you and your spirit left your body. Yes. And you were looking down at your body in a hospital room. I was, yes. Yes. And I didn't want to come back because I didn't want to go through all the hardships that I had had to live through already. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to get to go to heaven, you know, all the time. And uh, he said... Um, you got to go back. And I told him, I don't want to. And uh, so Latrell, the woman that you've married now, uh, she... Uh, the woman, your the sister. Woman, my sister. That pretty that young thing. beautiful thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, she came to me in her spirit form. While she I was, was praying. Yes, she was praying. And you saw her... Her spirit. You saw her spirit. Come to me. In the air, while Jesus was here, the angels all around here, and here now, I am too. Now, where was she? She was up beside no, me. No, but where was she physically? She was in Conroe, Texas. And where were you? Beaumont, Texas. So you were an hour away? Hour and a half, probably. Hour and a half away, mm -hmm. but yet you saw her spirit at the same time you saw... Jesus. Wow. Yes, I did. And uh, she said to me, Joy, Joy, you've got to go back. And I said, but no, I don't want to go back. And um, so her and Jesus did talk me into it to coming back. And that's, you know, God had me in a, I mean, Jesus had me in a place of protection while he had my spirit there with him. So he put my spirit back into my body. And when he put my spirit back into my body, then that my heart started beating again. And so that was 15 minutes and 28 seconds, according to the emergency room documents that I have from the trauma surgeon. So it was probably more like 19 minutes when you consider the two minutes that it took for him to get there and my flatlining at the beginning 
of uh, our pulling into the emergency room. Well, let but, me ask you a couple questions. When I interviewed Don Piper, and he, you know, you know the story, he was in East Texas, close to where you were in the hospital. He had an accident coming home from a Bible meeting, and an 18-wheeler ran over him, and he, you know, they put a blanket across his head, and they thought he was dead, said he was gone for 90 minutes. And he said when he, he went to heaven, he saw, the first thing that he saw, he said his grandfather had died uh, and a number of years before that, and the thing that he remembered, his grandfather had, was missing two fingers. And when he saw his grandfather in heaven, his fingers were back. He saw colors that he had never seen here. He heard sounds of music that he had never heard here. And it was, he heard like a thousand different uh, sounds like music, but he says it wasn't noise. It was all harmonious. And he said it was so peaceful and so wonderful. Were the things like that, I mean, you saw this grass that was moving and it felt like it was real living. Uh, mm -hmm. What else did you see? I did hear voices. I heard music, the most beautiful music. And from that music, when I got back to earth, the Lord gave me that music on a piano and um, I was looking at uh, some statues of angels and the Lord just started pouring this music through me and it started coming out my hands. And so I played this beautiful music and uh, then I, need, I thought I got to record that because that was so beautiful. My husband was laying on the couch. He said, what was that? I said, I don't know. But it's music I heard while I was in heaven. And so we recorded it. And during that time, the Lord, uh, I, about, it, my mother was in the hospital at the time. And uh, so we were going to see her. And I took the recording to Latrell because the Lord had told me that. The, the lady that I married. Yes, the lady that This is married. 20 years ago. But you and Latrell were both puckets. And you come yeah. from a long line of, I think there were nine kids and mm -hmm. the, the family uh, I guess you'd call it, you know, like the Von Trapp family singers. You were the Puckett family singers. Everybody sang, everybody played an instrument. So it was nothing for you to sit down at the piano and start playing this music that you'd heard in heaven. That's right, because it came, it was, I was just the instrument. And so then you took that music to baby sister, yes. Latrell. Because the Lord told me he would give her words. Yeah. And so she sat down and wrote the melody, and I think you named it, Crossing over, right? Yes, yeah, she named it Crossing Over. Well, tell well, together us. Together we did, I guess. Well, tell me about Crossing Over. What is it like to die and go to heaven? I've, I've read of people that have died and seen a vision of hell, and the Lord has allowed them to come back after they pleaded and gave their life to Him, and it was horrible. And then people like you and Don Piper and others that, that say heaven is real. What, it, what is it like to die? Um, it's not scary. First of all, I would say it's not scary. Well, it's scary to me. But, but it's not I'm, scary. And, and, and I'm a person of faith, but I suppose if I was in an accident and, and my life is leaving, it might not be scary then. But, but why should we not fear if we're believers? Because your spirit goes back to God who gave it. That's scripture. And so immediately when I died the first time, my spirit was immediately in heaven. Now, the second time, my spirit never got to heaven because Jesus stopped me on the way up. And the reason I believe for that is if, he had, if I had got back to heaven, I wouldn't have come back. There's no way. There's no way. You know, and I, you go back to the book of Genesis and when it talked about God formed man out of the ground, he says, then he breathed the spirit of life in him. So God put spirit in man. And then when man dies, that spirit n leaves. And it goes back to God yeah. who gave it because he breathed into Adam and made him a living soul. Yeah. Without that breath of life, then we are not living souls. Yeah. So when we come to Christ, then he breathes that uh, life spirit in us and the spirit of God comes and dwells within us. And uh, So when you die, the mm -hmm. spirit leaves the body and you can attest to that Yes, because you, your spirit left and you were in the hospital room looking down mm -hmm. at your body. Yes, I was. And that second time that I died, see, I died twice because the first time it was immediate, just in heaven. That's it. I mean, I completely died. 
The second time, I still they were still making my heart beat, so it wasn't complete death. There was just you know where I didn't have a heartbeat, but my spirit was above my body because if I'd have made it all the way to heaven again, I probably would not have come back. They probably could not have talked me <laughs> into coming back. But because of that, yeah. Well, you know, we're, as the, as the saying goes, so earthly minded sometimes that we're no heavenly good. But once you see heaven, I mean, earth is the last thing on your mind. Well, that's true because it no longer exists in, to you. Yeah. At that point in time, there's no, I had no remembrance of earth at that point in time. Until my, body, my spirit came back to my body, I had no uh, remembrance of earth right then. I don't know if later on I might, but at that point in time, I had no earthly uh, memories. But whenever my, my spirit was taken and headed back to heaven and Jesus stopped me in the air, then uh, he kept my spirit. He protected it so that 15 minutes and 28 seconds was nothing to him to put me back inside my spirit, back inside my body, and make me a living soul again. They sewed you up, and here you yeah. are, and it's uh, 20 years later almost, and I, you're doing fine. I have no residue. I have a scar from here to here, a scar from here to here, and a scar from here to here. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. All right, so in the time that we've got left, what would you tell someone that's, that's afraid of dying or doesn't know the Lord? I mean, if you know the Lord, you don't have to be afraid. What I can say is death is not scary if you know the Lord because you don't die. You just go to sleep. And when you go to sleep, then your spirit goes to heaven. And you live on. Your spirit lives on. And so because of that, you get to see all the things that God has prepared for you. You know, and the scripture says, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered to the, to the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. So if God's prepared it, he's already made a place, but he also reveals it to his, his people too. He can give it to them by his spirit and let them have a glimpse of what it is. And to give you hope, the hope of God is something that can carry you through whatever you're going through. Be it scary, be it hard, but when you have a hope of life eternal, then that gives you what you need. And death is not being unconscious. You were fully conscious. You walked right from this life into the next, conscious. Conscious. Immediately woke up. In heaven. Oh, and I need to say, when I came back to my body, there was no pain. You know, I said at the beginning, wow, how painful it was when that nail hit me. When I woke up that first time, there was no pain. No pain. I had none. And I was in the hospital for six days. That's all. And I had the most miraculous, I had 150 stitches. Miraculous. I had a very little pain. I took one pain pill. That's it. No more. And it was just a miraculous healing of my body because God had it all prepared. Yeah. Now, your, your family's going to sing a song about heaven to commemorate that on the show in just a moment. Tell us about that song. Then I'll come back in a minute and close after they sing. It's about angels camping around us and giving us what we need because even Jesus needed an angel come and strengthen him when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. And uh, so we all need strengthening and angels are God's ministering spirits. So they're there to help us and give us guidance sometimes through the Holy Spirit. Well, let's listen to that song and then we'll come back and close in just a moment. Angels Hey. Mm -hmm. 
Friends, Joy talked about the peace of passing from this life to the next life because she knew Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you today to just admit to Him that you're a sinner. Lord Jesus, I've sinned. Ask Him to forgive you of your sin and come into your heart and save you. And then you won't have to fear death. And uh, Joy's story has encouraged me so much that next week we're going to have uh, her baby sister, now my wife, Latrell, far on the show and let her sing the song that Joy heard called Crossing Over. So if you want to hear that song, you need to tune in next week. So we'll look forward to seeing you again next week on the next edition of In Your Corner.